which is electric circuit. Okay. So this differential equation can be applied to electric circuit also. Okay. So let's take a look at the differential equation here. Given that D for an RL circuit is given by L di dt plus Ri equals to Et. So what is the type of this differential equation? Anyone? Okay, what is the type of this differential equation? Come on. No. No, it's not Bernoulli. No, it's not separable. Linear. Yes, it is linear, right? We have, okay, that is linear. Okay, you have differential, a function with I there, and a function of T there. So it is actually, this is a constant. It is a function with T, and this is a function with T. So, in order to reduce to linear, you just make sure that the coefficient of the IDT here equals to 1, right? So, it can be Now it is linear where this is your PT and this is your QT. Okay. Why it is not Bernoulli? Because there is no um no power with ET there, right? Remember in uh, in Bernoulli we have y to the power of n, right? Okay, so what is I? What is I here? What is R? R is resistance. L is inductance. And E is the voltage source. Okay. And I is current. Okay. So now, for this form of differential equation, we are going to take a look at two cases. Okay. The first case and the second case. Where? In the first case, where ET here equals to constant. And in the second case where ET here is in terms of function of sine omega T or cos omega T. Okay. But both are linear. Okay. So now let's take a look at the proving process. Okay. You have your notes, right? So now we have to write this differential equation in terms of linear. So this is linear form. Okay. And then once you obtain the linear form of differential equation, you need to obtain what? You got notes with you, right? This is from the notes already. You need to obtain okay, the integrating factor of mu t where it is given by exponent to the power of p t. Okay, where p equals to what? P equals to R O L and Q equals to E naught over L. So we have mu T equals to exponent to the power of R over L. What is R over L then? 
What is R over L? Is it a function of T or what? R over L is a? Anyone? Yes, R over L is a constant, integrating constant, just putting T there. So this is your integrating factor. All right. And then once you obtain your integrating factor, then just substitute to mu T. This is I equals to mu times this Q. So mu is exponent R L T. I is I. Okay. Integrate exponent to the power of R over LT times QT. What is QT there? QT is E naught over L, right? Where this is given as a constant, the first case. So this is E naught over L, where E naught over L is constant for the first case. Then just integrate there. So this is constant. Okay, just integrate exponent r over lt. So putting e naught over l in front, exponent r over lt divided by r over l. This is exponent r over lt i. So rearrange and then you will get i there. Okay, is that clear? Anyone has question? Just simplify. This one, this one can be eliminated. This is how you obtain I, the current, for case one. Okay, any question? Anyone have, anyone has question? Okay. Yes. Mm, okay. No so now, let's take a look at the second case. Okay. So now, same process, but in second case, your E T is in term of function of T. Okay. So for this, for the case uh, number one, when you integrate mu t times qt, and qt is uh, a constant here, it is easy for you to just put this constant in front and just focus on integrating exponent r o l t. So now, what if this uh, this e not this e t here is in terms of uh, function of t? Okay. So what happened? So the general form of electric circuit differential equation can be written as di dt okay plus r over li equals to e naught over l sine omega t okay or cos omega t this one 
what if the et is in terms of a function of t that sine omega t or cos omega t so just substitute there so this is the reduced differential equation where we reduce this differential equation to a linear form so this is linear form okay just the same process where once you reduce to linear form you just need to identify what is your p and q right so your pt is equals to r over l and your qt now is equals to e naught over l sine omega t same process okay find your integrating factor where this p is, is equals to the previous p so this one your integrating factor equals to exponent r2 over lt. Right. Now, substituting to mu t i equals to integrate of mu t q t, then you will have, okay, in case 2, you will have e r over lt times with i integrate exponent r over lt times with e naught over l sine omega t so this is a constant just put them in front so focus on integrating exponent r over l t times sine omega t with respect to t okay so what you need to do here is integrate this by using integration by part or you can use tabular method okay so try to integrate this okay is that clear everyone now let's take a look at the example You have example one and two there. Okay, so now we have two volt batteries are connected to a series in which the inductance is 0 0.25 H. Okay, so the given is what? Inductance is what? Inductance is what is inductance again? Look at your notes. L. Okay, so L is given. Okay, and the resistance is A. So resistance is R. Determine the current. I T the initial time initial current is zero, okay. Then determine I when T approach infinity. So you are given the condition when T equals to zero, initial current is zero. Right. So now two volt batteries here is what. V right. V equals to. 9 times 2, which is 18. Okay. This is your what? That is your what? The voltage source, which is enough. Okay. So now, looking at the information given, so this is case one or case two? Okay, so case one. Just substitute everything. We have the IDT 
plus R over Li equals to E0. Okay, from the first case, E0 over L. All right. So, substituting everything, we have di dt, r is 8, 0 0.25i, e naught is 18 divided by 0 0.25. Okay, so just substitute here. Right, this one becomes 32, and this one is... Seventy two, right? So this is just solving the linear equation. So you can find your integrating factor, which is exponent to the power of thirty two t, right? And then substitute mu ti equals to integrate mu t qt. So substitute everything here. This one is times 72. And then you can get the answer here, right? This one becomes integrate. Sorry, 72 over 32 exponent 32 t plus with c. So your i is okay. Any question for this example? This is your i, okay. Now we want to find what is your c by using the your. The condition given. When I when t equals to zero, i equals to zero. So just substitute that. So c equals to what? Zero. C equals to negative. Two point two five. Okay, just substitute that. So your i equals to all right. So this is your particular solution. Now determine i. When t approach infinity, when it is in steady state. Okay, just substitute. What is your i when t approach to infinity? Okay, then you should have this is zero, then i equals two. Okay, is that clear or not? Okay, all right. Next, for the second example, same process. Okay, understand that this is a circuit problem. Consider the circuit given in the figure with R equals to 4, L equals to 2, B equals to cos 3, T. Find the current IT. Okay, so this is another circuit problem where the reduced differential equation is in terms of the IDT plus R over Li equals to E T over L. Now, the I dt plus R is 4, L is 2, equals to E is cos 3T over L. Okay, so from here, you can say that this one, this integrating factor, this is what? 
This is your PT equals to 2. And this is your QT. So integrate exponent to the power of PT. Then you will have exponent 2T. Okay? Then just substitute. And then you will have mu t exponent to t i okay exponent to t integrate times with cos 3t over 2 just put 1 over 2 in front okay this is how you understand the problem first and once you want to identify the solution just proceed with the integration process okay so please proceed with this. This is your activity for today. And the answer should be right. You have learned integration before this. Okay. Integration by part you can use or integration by using tabular method. Try to get I here. Okay, there is no condition given, just let the constant value there. All right, so this is your activity. Just save it for later. All right, take note first. Okay, I'm just going to proceed here. Anyone has question? Yeah, okay. This is this is simple integration, right? So just revise by just integrate by part or tabular method. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to attach this example as your activity later in e-learning. Okay, just proceed with the integration and find i. Very easy. Okay, now let's take a look at the next application, which is our last application for today. Okay. So if some said that it is clear, then I just can proceed, right? If you have question, you just can raise your hand, okay? Or you just can interrupt me. Okay, now the next application is vertical motion. Newton's second law of motion. Vertical motion. Okay, as from the notes, we have what? We have gravity, we have normal forces, we have tension, we have friction. So there, there are the examples of vertical motion. Okay, we can find the, the motion of gravity where the object is pulled downwards. Okay, the normal force where the surface is pushed. The tension where the force are applied by long thin object which are stretched. And the friction opposed motion along two surfaces in contact. So these are all following the vertical motion of Newton's second law of motion. Okay, so now as you can see, m dv dt equals to f. What is the type of differential function there? Yeah. M dvd t equals to f. What is the type of differential equation? Yes, it is separable. Okay, so 
this can be applied to uh, find force, all right? Where how much an object can accelerate depends on the mass of the object and how much force is applied. Okay, the one is for F equals to N A, right? You have learned this in physics. The greater the force, the greater the acceleration, the greater the mass, the greater the force needed for the same acceleration as well. Okay, so now this is another type of differential equation which follows separable equation. Whereas you can see here we have M is a mass, okay? V is the velocity and F is the external force and of course T is time. So it is a changes of velocity within time in order to, ind to identify its acceleration. Okay, now let's take a look at the example. So I will explain this through the example given. All right. All right. A parachute is falling towards us with velocity v. Okay. His acceleration is given. Okay. Now this is the acceleration of a thing, which is parachute is here falling towards us. All right. So falling down side. All right. Which given by acceleration dvdt equals to 32 minus 2 we Assume that the parachute starts from rest where t equals to 0, v equals to 0. Find the velocity and the distance x at the parachute has fallen after t seconds. Okay, so you know that this vertical motion followed separable equation. So first separate the function where we will have 1 over 32 minus 2 V dV equals to dt. All right. In order to find V, we need to solve this uh, differential equation by integrating both sides. Okay. We have ln 32 minus 2 V equals to ln, uh, sorry, equals to T plus C, right? So simplify, we have 32 minus 2V equals to exponent minus 2T times exponent minus 2 C, where this is a constant, then we just can simplify in terms of A. All right? So now we want to have V, okay, then V equals to what? V equals to 32 minus A exponent minus 2T. Times with 2 here. So we have VT equals to 16 minus a over 2 is another constant, then just simplify with B. Okay, is that clear? Anyone has question? Where B equals to A over 2. Anyone has question? Understand it all here? Yes, sir. Okay, so now this V equals to Sorry, applying the condition when t equals to 0, v equals to 0. Okay, so just substitute here 0, 16 minus v e, 0. So v equals to 16. Then your voltage equation becomes 16 minus 16. Exponent minus 2t simplifies 16, 1 minus. Exponent minus 2t. All right, this is your voltage. So now find the velocity and the distance that the parachute has fallen after t seconds. So this is the voltage. After t second, this is the velocity obtained. Okay, whatever t equals to what, just substitute there in order to get the voltage value. So when t equals to zero, v equals to zero. Okay, if you want. 
what happened to the velocity after 10 minutes, just substitute T there. Okay. And given T is in seconds, so just convert to seconds. Okay. Now, we want to find X. How can we find X? X is what? The distance. Okay. Okay, now how come you find the distance from velocity? Remember, what is velocity? What is the definition of velocity? Come on. So how come you can find distance? You want to find x, where x is a distance. So velocity is a rate of change of distance. So in order to find distance, right, we need to integrate dt because this is what? Velocity itself is the change of distance. All right, rate of change of distance, which is we need to integrate the velocity to find distance. All right, so now in order to find x, we have to integrate v. So just integrate them. Okay, integrate 16 minus 16. All right. Then we have 16 T, 16 divided by my negative 2 is 8 plus with C. This is your XT. Okay, is that clear? Okay, just apply the condition given when v equals to 0, t equals to 0. So does x. Okay, when there is no velocity, there is no distance. Then just apply it here. So 0, this one is 0, this one is 8, plus with c. So c equals to negative 8. Then the distance is given by the equation of 16t plus 8 exponent minus 2t minus 50. So this is for velocity, this is for distance. Is that clear? All right, any question? Okay, so now as you can see, we can apply, we can apply the differential equation in this motion in uh, electric circuit, okay, in population and growth. And then we have done also with the law of cooling in temperature and so on. Okay, so let's take a look at the last example here. All right, where well, I just to, I just need to explain first and then I'm going to leave it with you. All right, so the next example. Okay, a particle move vertically under the force of gravity G against air resistance KV squared. Okay, where K is constant. The movement is given by the differential equation here. So this movement is given by this, right? If the particle starts off from rest, 
shows that the velocity of that particle anytime t is given by this. So find v and show that this v, where v is given, such that lambda is given by uh, square root of g over k, where this lambda is just a simplified version of g over k there. Find, then find the velocity as time approach infinity. So we want to find vt when t approach to infinity. Okay, so first, this is what? This is what? What is the type of the differential equation here? As you can see, we have V, we have T, all right? Then G here is a constant there. Then we can identify that this is separable equation. So separate them first, where we have dv 1 over g minus kv squared equals to dt, okay? And then you can integrate both to find what is your v, okay? And then once you've got your v, substitute the condition. If the particle starts off from rest, means when t equals to zero, v equals to zero. Okay, what happened with the constant, right? And then substitute, and then you can get this v, okay? By simplifying the uh, g over, set g over k there with lambda, so this is your v, right? And then once you've got the particular solution of v, we can find the velocity as the time approach infinity, okay? Right. This is your activity for today. I hope you can try it. Anyone has question? I'm going to leave you with this example. You can discuss among your friends. Anyone has question? 